We made this happen. <laughs> it's so good to see you. It's been a while, eh? It really has. How's life? Yeah, it's good. Different. Whatever. Like everybody else is, right? But we'll, we'll get out of it soon, hopefully. What can you do? You're doing so much cool stuff. I know, but uh, I was just on the phone with my dad right before he this, and I was like, oh my God, I'm burning out. Well, yeah, you have to be careful. You are. I'm like, can't believe how much social you do. It's insane. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. So it's been hard to hire good staff. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. A lot of coffee, though. A lot of coffee. So it's um, got to find a balance. But... And then the bleak weather kind of. It's not oh, good it does not me. help at all. <laughs> are you awesome. at home right now? Yes, I am at home. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't been, I didn't bother going in at all, like for the, for the time that we were off. It's just like, it's just a hassle. Did you guys have a choice to go in? Yeah, 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 yeah. We could go in, like we oh. could go in and, but there's, uh, what I'm doing with the Z, there's not really a, like that much of a point. Like I can see with like sciences and whatnot, when they're, they need, like they need their space and they need all that stuff. But, um, and is there a virtual phys ed or not really? Uh, well, yes, 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 yes. Um, we do a little a few workouts with them and stuff. And basically, we're just trying to we're just trying to um, check in on them and make sure that they're well, right? Like just checking in to make sure that, you know, they are going outside and they're not on their computer all the time. And they're they are trying to get some exercise. And um, but it's a lot like it's a lot for the kids to do school online and to find the time and to peel themselves. Well, like, you know, once you're online, you're online and just time goes by so fast and then your day is gone. Right. So well, that, and it's just the blue light, you know, is the screen time. Not yeah. Just like the phone and zoom fatigue. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So just making sure that they're well and get, making sure that they have activities to do and that they're checking in and, and it's just making the contact, right. Like just making sure that you have contact with the kids. That's the most important part, but. And how is Char- Charlie doing? she's great she's in grade seven so yeah so if you can put this into perspective your mom yeah she so azra was my first group that was my first group of kids at coaching and she was was at mckenzie yeah that was that was my first group and so yeah, so I was pregnant and I had Charlie and your mom came to every game and every practice wanted to be the first mom there and she took care of Charlie as a baby because Charlie was at her first basketball game at a week old and your mom walked around gym after gym after gym cuddling a brand new baby and yeah, that's how I survived my first few years of being able to just keep coaching. Cause I never took a mat leave that when I had Charlie, I never took a mat leave from, from co- coaching. I took six weeks off from school yeah. and then, but I still coached. And I remember having the parents meeting and saying, I'm going to do this cause I love your kids, but I'm going to need expert moms on hand. And there they were. And your mom leading the pack. Yeah, it was awesome. I, like, I'll, I'll, I just will never forget it. It was like the coolest thing. She was but, a good lady. Yeah, may her soul rest in peace. Yeah. So, but yeah, so now she's in grade seven. So she's at, actually at Rundle as well. So good for her. And is she playing basketball? Well, she would have, she was, yes, she is in the community. And then, of course, she wanted to start everything and play every sport on the planet when she got. To Rundle. So she, I put her into Rundle when she was grade three, when we built our new campus. And then, um, yeah, she was so excited to come to the junior high and to actually start playing sports. And then COVID hit and now she didn't get to do, she didn't get to do anything this year. So a bit. She's at home home as well with you. Oh yeah. Yeah. But we're all back on, on Tuesday, which is good, but yeah. I don't get it though. Why would they want people to get back? Like just finish the school year at home, just call it a year. (laughs) Like, you know, it's so hard. I think it's super hard to like, yeah, like I, I mean, 
my if opinion you is that from my side because I don't have kids to say oh my god why did you just finish the school year at home I know but it just it just is so horrible doing school online like it's so it's just like anything though right like why do you go to school you go to school to make relationships and you go to school to build connections and you go to school to have face-to-face contact with people and and it's just so different like it's just it's definitely not for me I've hated all of it about being at home and how is Mr. Adolf doing he's good he's been to so he's at teaching at state and so he's uh yeah, so he's still he's been online for like the whole time for fourteen months. So he's so still. Do you guys have like three corridors for. Oh the- yeah, we just have like school going on everywhere. So. Yeah, so it's it's crazy, but. Yeah, have so- your bio right here as well. You know, um, NCCP level three nationally certified basketball coach. Wow. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? I think Basketball? we should talk about the journey. I think, um, you know, it's beautiful that you've done so much. You know, you've got the Shooting Stars Coaching Hall of Fame. We can talk about that. We won't talk about my basketball shorts that I had to wear one time, though. No, yeah, we won't. We no. won't talk about it. <laughs> but it is something that me and Miss P talk about all the time. Yeah. Uh, Yep, it was the best. How you showed yeah, up. Hey, okay. I remember this guy. How <laughs> uh, you showed up in that class. Oh my God. But yeah, let's talk about that. So, um, how did you get started? And obviously, loving basketball, teaching basketball, becoming a teacher. Are you from Calgary or originally? No, I'm originally from um, the interior of BC in Calcigar. Oh, so, gosh. growing up in a small town, I played. My dad was my coach. My dad was my high school basketball coach and um, my mom played basketball and coached basketball too. So basketball was in, it was obviously in our family. And um, I always knew I wanted to coach. I always knew I wanted to be around the sport. I just loved it. I loved everything about it. I loved what it gave me as a, I loved what it gave me as a high school student. And it's funny because most people um, look at my daughter now, she's very outgoing and, and they get said, oh, she's just so much like you. I was not like that in high school. I was shy. I, I barely said a word. I always was homesick. I never wanted to sleep over at people's houses. I just, I had, I had the, I had, I knew I had the confidence to, to do things because I could play, I could play sports, uh, but I was just so shy. Like I wasn't a, like I wasn't a natural leader anywhere. And I just Were you found- Yeah. And I just found a really, and I just found a really safe place playing basketball. I felt, I felt confident there and it probably helped that my dad was my coach, but I don't even think that that was it. And just always feeling safe in that team environment. And so that's how I think I've always coached and I've always taught. I've always wanted to make relationships with kids. I mean, I've taught you, I taught your sister, I coach your sister, but coaching is so much different than teaching because you spend so much time, so much more time. And so to talk about how you have to open yourself up and you have to let your family in talking about how your mom was able to take my daughter. I took her daughter and I spent time with her and coached her. And then your mom took mine and you just have to open up yourself and you create this, this family. And I always knew that it was important for every girl that I coached. And I always wanted it to be an important part of playing a sport that they had a safe place to be. And they had a safe place to take risks and a safe place to land when they fell um, and that they were always supported. So that was always important to me because I knew that as a kid, that made me who I was. So, yeah, so I, I just, I started to really love that piece about coaching and yeah, it was about playing games and about traveling and about winning games and teaching kids and making them the best that they can be. But at the end of the day, I became, I just wanted to create this family. And so my teams have always been these, these families and there's risk in that the more you let people in and the more you open yourself up and be vulnerable. There's, there's risk in that obviously, right? Like you risk being hurt. You, you risk all of these things. And so now as a, 
as a, as a coach, it's, and my husband laughs because I always fall into a depression at the end of a basketball season because it's a, it's a loss. Like I, I have this family and then I leave this family, um, even though they're always around, but it's just, it's just such an intense moment. It's such an intense time where, you know, so much about all of these kids and all of these girls and all of these families and these, and I've just noticed that the girls just change so much and they grow so much and they become so much more confident. And I've just always thrived off that. I love that. I, I love it. Like I just, I can't, I can't stop doing it. And so um, over the years, it just became, it just became more and more natural for me to create this culture that the kids were able to just buy into and feel so safe in. And I always talk about, um, there's always girls that come back and, and that were at the beginning of the creating of this basketball team at Rundle. And they're like, Oh, we never won. We never won the provincial championships. We never did that. But we always talk about the people had to start it. Mm -hmm. People had to start building the culture. People had to start understanding how important that family was. And these girls pass it on, right? They go from grade 10 to grade 11, grade 12. And it's not necessarily me having them buy in. It's these girls that continue to, to get these girls to buy in. So over 15 years, the people that started with me, they're the ones who actually led to the provincial championships. And they're the ones who led to the creation of this program, because if it wasn't for them, buying in initially how would that culture ever be built is it hard to have them leave you know the grade 12s leave and yeah you can follow their journey afterwards but it's never the same because there's certain people or just certain groups that were just so close to you it's it's always horrible i, I it is always horrible and i think every year it's going to get better um but it's always it's always the loss. Like it, it really does feel like a loss and the connection that all of the girls make um, with each other as a, as that core group, that part just never, ever seems to really go away. So no, like that. And that's, I don't know how to coach any other way. And I say that all of the time to people um, cause I really, I, I miss them. I miss them so much. And I miss um, having, cause each team you have it has a certain dynamic and then you take you know the grade twelves graduate and the dynamic shifts and changes and it becomes its own little thing every year um but there's always just that loss what is the dynamic shifts is it in terms of you know how they play on the court or is it more or less the way they interact with one another and yourself i think it's honestly the about the relationship building for sure a hundred percent like i I can't imagine doing anything without building that trust in those relationships. Right. And it's just like, everybody wants a place to belong. Everybody wants a place to belong. Everybody wants to feel like they can contribute. Everybody wants to be able to take chances and take risks and be okay. Right. That's how you get better. That's how you grow. And everybody needs that person or that champion beside them to allow them to do it. Right. And so I've always done it. I've always found um, the creating of the of traditions help a lot in the um, building of this, of the culture and the building of the program. So for years and years and years, um, you know, we I really highlight our grade 12 kids and they, they really are regardless of their skill level, like they are, they're it right? They're the captains. They're the ones who um, have roles to play with the grade 11s and the grade 10s. They're the ones helping to, um, you know, create the hotel rooms when we go away and they have just so much input so they can actually mentor these girls and create this, this culture because it can't always just come from me. Like they have to buy into it another, buy into it another way. Um, so I've always had traditions where, um, we celebrate our, our grade 12s. Oh, we celebrate our grade 12s. The last um, league game, last day in their gym. We always celebrate, make it a huge thing. They always get the same traditional gift. They get the same type of introductions. 
And so then the grade 11s are dying to want to do that. And then, the, and then we always have the grade um, 10s and 11s. They always um, celebrate the grade 12s as well. So it's just this like, it's just this reciprocal kind of respect um, that kind of keeps going on and on and on. And I've, I've really noticed in doing that, um, how much the girls are able to be confident in other areas of their life because they are really, really valued. Um, and they have a tribe, right? They have a tribe and they're really, really valued in that, in that area. So. Did you see yourself in a lot of the girls when you were that timid, shy person and le left everything on the court? Yes, always. I, I do. Um, and it's funny because you have, I mean, my office door and it's, it's funny because for years, my, it, my, I just have a revolving door of girls walking in, walking in <laughs> at seeking counsel. I'm like, how did I become a counselor in all this? I just was going to coach basketball, but um, yes, because you have to, to make relationships with people, you have to see them for who they are. And you have to try to understand where they're coming from. And I think, especially with um, girls, high school girls, um, they don't know where they are or where they wanna be half the time. And they need to find a voice. And like I said, they need a space where they can find that voice. And I and just- a safe voice. Yeah. Safe and I, yeah. And they, different parts of their personality can come out in sport, which I think is, is an interesting thing and different from teaching to coaching. Um, you can get a really shy, passive girl to become aggressive and find really good value in what they can do on a basketball court. You can see different parts of their person and that start part starts to that they start to build that up. And so then they go off, they go off into the hallways and they go off into their other classes and they just now feel like they have that confidence and watching them grow from grade 10 to 12 is just amazing. And then you see them now, I see them grow to, you know, now they're married and now to have kids and, to grow into these, these beautiful, successful, wonderful women and to know, Hey, maybe I played a little bit of a part in the building of that self-esteem and the building of that strength and in hopes that they create their own families with that type of, of strength and that type of passion and relationship building. Um, that's what Those I love. Values that you instill in them. And yeah. They yeah. And that's what I love. And it's, it's, it's funny. I mean, I, you always have to look at COVID now and try and find some type of silver lining as to why, why this is happening and if there's anything good in it. And the way I have felt with not coaching this year has been very hard. It's been, um, it, it's a big hole in my life that I don't have. And to not see these girls as a team, to see them in the hallway separately and to not see them together and to not um, be able to interact with them in the way that I would it, on a basketball team re it makes me realize that I still want to do it and I still have a lot to give and I'm not done this journey, building these relationships with these girls and, and helping them succeed and grow. And I just, I just love it. And I love that I've had my daughter with me the whole way. And she's been able to watch these young ladies grow. And I think that's what's made her um, the person that she is right now to have confidence all so these young. Teammates that she gets to see all these people. Yeah, it's amazing. and. So it's something I've always done. I have taken her on every trip. I have taken, she hasn't missed a trip and she, she's an only child, but that kid is not an only child. She has hundreds of sisters, right? 
and they all know her and they can all remember and they all have stories and they, um, that is just an amazing thing. I think. Yeah. So are you an only child as well? I am not. There's oh. four. Yes, I'm not. <laughs> I'm like the second child. So like, I'm kind of like partial middle child syndrome, but uh, yeah. And so. Oh, I was yeah, going to ask you, how, how much of it is, um, you know, do you have to have skill and talent or can you learn to have that? And is it all a mental game? You know what? I have made great teams and great players out of non-athletes by making them believe that they can do something by making them believe and having them find even one thing that they are really good at that they can own and that they can do. And I think that's a lot about coaching and especially coaching girls is they have to know that there's something that they can do really, really well. Mm -hmm. They have to be able to focus on it. And it is helping them find that one thing that they can do. And it's all about creating that space where they can believe it. And a lot of times believe in you. That's the thing. They believe in you yeah. and you build yeah. that. And it's, it's a really cool thing to see how you're able to do that and not even convince, but, go through leadership, show through past, you know, results that you can get to where you want to get to. Look where I came and look, you overcame a lot of your fears. Yeah. So it's like, it's interesting too, because, you know, it's, it's really hard to win. <laughs> like It's really hard to win. Um, and I think that that part about sport is really funny because people want, results and they want to win. And those things, if you really want them to matter, and if you really want them to be impactful, they take years. They take years. It takes the kids you coached in 2006 to have a winning record in 2020, right? Like it takes, you have to be so patient and you have to go through, um, you have to go through all of that with all of these kids. And if all you wanted was results, if all I wanted was results, I would not have a good time. I would not be passionate about it because I would miss so much. I would miss so much about what kids are like. And who's your mentors and who is the people that you were inspired by that, you know, you say, Hey, let me take a little bit of that and bring it into these kids. Um, well, you know, it's, it's all, well, I mean, for sure, hundred percent, my dad, um, for sure. Um, I, I think he's always been just a, you know, a phenomenal coach. Um, but when I started teaching, um, I started in, um, small, a small town just outside of Casper in Salmo. Um, and then I went to the Okanagan. I was in Kelowna for um, four years and, I remember when I started teaching, I would, I walked into schools and I looked around and I was like, okay, who are these, where are these mentor teachers and mentor coaches? Like, where are the old guys that I can go to and figure out how to teach, how to coach and how, how to figure out what I want in this career. And so when I, <laughs> when I was inducted into the hall of fame a couple of years ago, it that was the coolest thing because I looked out to this audience of all of these coaches that I admire that are 60 and 70 years old. And there they are, they're in the hall of fame and I'm friends with them. I'm friends with them. And it's always funny. My, uh, I mean, you travel around and you meet the coaching world and ends up being small, but, um, the girls always are like, why do you have so many old men as friends? <laughs> like, well, because they're the most brilliant. Like they are the most brilliant people, you know, when you go and you pick their brains and they've been coaching in small towns and developing programs for 25, 30, 35 years. And you just have to find those people and talk to them and take everything you can from them. And so I had a lot of those people 
I had a lot it's of those. It's not just drills and plays. It's actually their mindsets right. on how they, I guess, trim these people to become who they yeah. are. Yeah, life. And it's funny as you go through the coaching world, um, coaching in high school is so different than coaching in, in community. Um, and that was kind of the, pref- the premise of my um, Hall of Fame speech that I had was, there is nothing better than coaching high school athletes because they're, they're students. They're just kids. They're kids that want to play, mm-hmm. right? They're kids that want to play. And you get to see so much about those kids. You get to see them in drama. You get to see them in their science classes. You get to see them in the hallways. You get to see them with their friend groups. You get to see them all over the place. And they're these, they're these people, these big people, these kids are just these big people with so much and you get to, you get to learn that you get to meet like these really enriched kids and people and you, you get to work with them and you get to mold them and work with them and, and get everything you possibly can out of them. Um, Is the goal to break down the ego or to take that ego and, use it, that energy in the game. You know what? I think that that's, it always depends on the kids. It always depends. I think. Um, But I've always, my biggest thing is always, I need to get inside this kid. I need to get inside this kid's head. Um, Whether they're uh, great athletes, ego driven kids, or whether they're, shy non-athletes want to be a part of a team. I got to get inside and figure out how they tick. And I am not shy about it. I am in their girl making, making me that I am making them be my best friend, whether they like it or not. And it, and you know, some, it's just all people, right? Some people it's harder than others, but you just grind until you get down to the, uh, the core of who they are. And that's what I always like finding out who they are. You're probably like you, their mama bear as well. Well, trust me, there's been years of, you know, mama A and all this stuff and, you know, um, but it's good. I love it. Awesome. What do you have in store for post COVID? You know what? I need to get kids in a gym. Yeah. That's what I want. And it's, I've had this conversation with lots of coaches lately and I'm, and I'm sure you've had these conversations with pretty much anybody. I think it's the same in any type of business right now too. Um, I think COVID has been so hard on kids and it's been, it's really been hard on sport and athletics, obviously. I think moving forward, we all need to take a different approach to coaching and to sport and to the way we deal with kids. I think we're, we're going to need to take a bit more of a, a slow kind of empathetic approach to people as we get back into what was and see what that's now going to look like. So I think the face of, of sport and school sports going to, going to change um, because now I think we're starting from scratch. We got to get kids to love what they're doing and, we need to get them to feel safe again. So I, I do feel like I'm going to be starting from scratch and, and that's okay. Drive, right. And have the drive to, you know, they've seen so much of a roller coaster. They're like, man, whatever people lose hope. Yeah. And you want it, you want them to grab onto something. You need to have some carrot to have them grab onto it and stay and buy in and want to be all in with what you're doing. And what did you stay level headed and calm through it all? <laughs> that's funny how do i do that i generally have an assistant coach who's much calmer than i am okay. <laughs> um you know what i talk a lot i have to talk through things a lot and it's also been years and years like my coaching style and everything has changed so much um over the years but i talk more than i ever have And I think that that's really important. And I talk more to my athletes than I ever have. Um, 
but just like being a parent or just like being a, a best friend with somebody. Um, when you get close to somebody and when you're coaching, you, you know, you, you will get mad at them and you will yell and you will have high expectations and, and those things are going to happen, but then you always got to circle back. You always got to circle back and talk through all of it and give some reasons and be accountable for losing it. Um, You're such a leader and a mentor to so many young girls. You're an inspiration. After this pandemic is all over, what's your hope and goals for these women in the near future? I want them to continue to be brave and to take chances and to know that they can do really can do anything that, that they want. And in order to do that, I want to create places for them where they can take risks. And I think that's important for everybody, but I do think it's important for girls to take risks and to be supported. And that's where I come in and a program comes in and the creation of a program and talking and being empathetic and letting people know that it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay if they're not feeling like they're the strongest person, but collaboratively we can make each other stronger. And I think that that's really what is the joy of coaching. And I, and I do think it's the joy of coaching girls um, because they will buy in quicker mm -hmm. and they will express themselves quicker and they will be vulnerable quicker if you show them your vulnerability. I think you can get so much more out of people um, if you can be accountable and if you can open up your heart to them and your life to them. And I think that's how we get the most out of anybody. Have you seen, have you seen your uh, team's mental health deteriorate over time? Oh, through the COVID? Yeah, yes. Um, so when things hit, so last year we lost the end of our season and then this year we lost the whole thing. Um, so I've had many conversations with, so I have seven girls graduating this year that lost oh, a year no. and a half, right. Um, girls that wanted to play post-secondary, but, but those opportunities are now gone. So I've had you know, I've had a lot of tears. I've had a lot of tears, but I'll take those tears if they're going to talk, right? I'll take those tears any day if they will be, if they'll talk and get it out. And what I've always said to them, and I celebrated my grade 12s this year in a COVID friendly way. They got their, they got recognized and they got their gifts and they got their recognition. Um, and we did it in a, in a COVID friendly way. And um, it was sad because I don't know how to take away how empty they feel. Like I can't, cause it's a loss and they need to own it. And I can't take that away and I can't make that better, but I can give them a place to talk about it because you can't carry that. And, you know, the one thing I said to them is I would rather have this feeling and know that I was passionate about something and I loved something and I loved um, a team and I loved an environment, I would rather have that feeling than never have it. Regret, right? Regret. Yeah, than never have it. So as crappy as all of this is, we had, they, they had a home, they had a, a team, they had a great team and they had great experiences and those things are never going to go away because they meant something to them. So they'll always have that. As we head off now, what is one of the last messages you could leave us with? Something inspirational for your, your team and uh, Calgary? Something inspirational. Um, I think everybody needs to continue to be empathetic to people. I think everybody needs to understand people more and really get to know them. And I think we all can be a little bit more vulnerable in order to create the relationships that are so, so important um, in, in all areas of life, but especially with kids. 
kids need champions, kids need support. Um, and, and that's why we're here as teachers and coaches and, and human beings to support each other. And I don't think, and it doesn't end when you graduate from high school, it keeps going. And um, yeah, that's, that, I don't know if that's inspirational, but. No, that was, thank you for this. I appreciate this. This is so this cool. Is fun. It was so good to see you. Yeah, and we can't wait. We will get together once everything's done. Hazard will come out too. I told her. So. Yes, it is. Awesome. Well, <laughs> say hi to Paul for me, though. I will for sure. Thank you so much. You have so many great people on that I was like pretty honored that you had actually asked me. I love it. I'm Thank honored you. you're on. Thank you. Aw, yeah. thanks so much. I do appreciate it. It was awesome.